Okay, so here we are with section 1.4, which is quadratic equations. And they're going to give us a couple of methods on how to solve quadratic equations. So the first thing, no matter which method you're using, is you always want to have your quadratic equation in this form. So always want to have your higher exponent first, um, and your constant last, and of course your middle term in the middle. Um, and then it always needs to be equal to zero. So it needs to be in descending order where the exponent descends until there is no more variables and you need to have it equal to zero, okay? Now, since we learned how to factor in the last section, um, the first method to solving equations actually uses that concept. So remember, math is like, is like a, um, a ladder. You can't get to the next step without having first Step on the first step okay so you know just like our building blocks with factoring we learned the greatest common factor then we use that to do grouping then we use that to factor trinomials um, it builds right now we're going to use that whole entire factoring knowledge to solve quadratic equations so it says zero factor property says if a and b are complex numbers where a times b equals zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero or both equals zero, okay? So remember, in order for you to multiply to get zero, either a had to be zero, because zero times anything is zero, or b had to be zero, because b zero times anything is zero, or if both of them are zero, then you can still get zero, okay? So, when we get problems like this, basically we have to make sure that it's in descending order and equal to zero. And then from there, you just factor it and then set each factor equal to zero. So here, let's see, we get negative 20. So we get one and 20, two and 10, three, no, not three, um, four and five. And then the middle guy is positive, and it's a positive one, actually. So the big guys have to be positive, but because the product needs to be negative, that means these smaller numbers will be negative. And this is the combination that's gonna give me a positive one. So I get 10x squared minus 4x, positive 5x minus two. Now this is just more like side work. I am not doing the equation, okay? I'm just trying to figure out how to factor this. So then I'm gonna group. This side has a two and an x in common, which leaves me with five x minus two. Bring down my plus sign. This side has nothing in common, so I'm gonna put a one. But this divided by one is still five x. This divided by one is still minus two. They obviously have a 5x minus 2 in common, and if I take it out, I still have 2x plus 1. So now I'm going to go back to the equation. So this equation is equivalent to this equation. The only, the only issue here, and let me, let me write it smaller just because I can see that I have to have room for some other problems here. Um, so since this product equates to this expression on the left hand side, this equation is equivalent to that equation. Now I'm going to use the zero factor property that says if I have two factors equal to zero, either this factor equals zero or this factor equals zero or both, okay? And if I solve these resulting equations, let's add two to both sides. We get five X equals two, then divide by five on both sides. I get X equals two fifths or let me minus one on both sides and then divide by two on both sides and I get X equals to one half. So I get two answers here. Now, depending on how the computer wants you to select them, um, they may ask you for what's called the solution set 
And in that case, you just put both of your answers as a list inside a pair of braces, okay? And that's the solution set. The answer could be two-fifths, the answer could be negative one-half, or both of them could be the answer, okay? Um, kind of losing my focus here a little bit, if that makes it better. Now, I also want you to notice that you might get equations that look like this. Notice that these equations are not equal to zero, okay? And so it is your job to make it so that it is equal zero. My suggestion is keep the x squared term positive. So if it is positive already, leave it there and move the other two terms over to that side. If this term were a negative x squared term, then I would want to move the negative x squared term over to make it positive and then everything else would have to go to that side as well. So you always want to make sure you move your terms so that your squared term is positive. That's the goal. So mine's already positive. So that means I'm going to actually add x to both sides. So I get 10x squared plus x. And then I'm going to minus 2 to both sides. So I get 10x squared plus x minus 2 equal to 0. Now notice that I didn't combine them because none of these are like terms. They cannot be combined. All, they can be, all that can be done is them written next to each other. Okay. So notice that this is the same problem here. So I, I don't need to redo everything. I already know that this is going to factor into this because I've already done it. Um, and I already know that I'm going to get 2 fifths as an answer here and negative 1 half as the other answer. The, the point of this was not to go through the factoring again. The point of this problem was just so that you could understand that it might not be equal to zero every single time you see the equation. And you will have to move terms around so that it is equal to zero before you start factoring. Okay, that's what we needed to learn from that second example. From this third example, notice that this is not a trinomial, so I can't do the AC method. Um, it's the difference of squares. So we factor this, x times x is x squared, 3 times 3 is 9, 1 with the plus, 1 with the minus. And now you have your factored version equal to 0. So that means that x plus 3 could equal 0, or x minus 3 could equal 0. And then if I solve each one of these equations for x, we get that you could have um, negative three or positive three as a solution, okay? Now I'm gonna stop the video here because that's the zero factor property. In the next video, we'll cover another method.